Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. And before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently using. And that is the Neverfull MM in the Demi Azure. My very well-loved uh, Neverfull in Demi Azure. Uh, and I often get um, asked where you guys can ask questions for Minx Monday Q&A. And if you can please put them on the most recent MMQA, it makes it a lot easier for me to be able to see uh, what it is that you guys want me to answer. Okay, so let's get started started with the very first question, shall we? <clears throat> From Alexis JP. I wanted to add an Alma BB to my collection and I was eyeing the Epi Denim. Do you think it's worth the price or should I just stick to Demi Ben? What are the pros and cons for each? Uh, okay, so the Alma BB in Demi Ben retails for $1,200 here in the States, if I'm not mistaken. And the Alma BB in Epi Denim retails for Oh, I want to say 1670 here in the States. So obviously it's a little bit more expensive. Uh, the Epi Denim has black handles and obviously it is the Epi leather and it has the silver hardware. It's a very, you know, I'm not too, I'm not too big on the color blue, but I really, really like the combination of the hardware and the black handles that the Epi Denim has. So, uh, to be honest, I think both, uh, bags would be a great, great uh, option because they're very, very carefree. You don't have to worry about Vaquetta. You don't have to worry about water stains. Um, and I think that in the long run, if you were to get the Epi Denim, it might be, if, if you decided to resell it, it might be a little bit more difficult to resell it in the sense that, uh, kind of like I told you guys before, when it comes to colored bags, you have to find the right buyer for them, you know, whereas the Damia Ben is a little bit more universal. So that's something to, to think about. But I think both are great. Again, very, very carefree. Um, I would have to say that the Epi is definitely a little bit more carefree because we often hear about Damia Ben with uh, the peeling on the treated leather. I know that I haven't heard that too often anymore, uh, but still it's, uh, you know, it's always something that I keep in the back of my mind. And that's probably why I haven't jumped the gun to, uh, to to purchase that handbag. But again, both are great options. Um, and um, if you really like the gold hardware, then I would go for the Demi Ben. Or if you like the red interior that the Demi Ben has, then that would be great. Or if you want something a little bit different, maybe something to, you know, something that not, um, something that's not very, you know, you don't see too often in a collection, you know, such as Demi Ben or a monogram or something like that, then you can go for the Epidenum. But both are fantastic. Uh, okay. Um, Aileen Morira. I am so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. What do you think of the Gucci Soho disco bag and the Chloe Faye wallet on a strap? Considering both Gucci in red and Chloe in gray. Opinions, please. Okay. So the Gu or so the uh, the Chloe retails for $795 here in the States and the Gucci Soho retails for $980 here in the States. Okay. So when the Gucci first came out, I, I appreciate the bag, you know, and you guys know my love hate relationship with Gucci. Um, and it's a really nice bag in the beginning. I was just like, Oh, okay. It's nice, but it's not really for me. But the more and more I see, especially those ladies who have been unboxing it or revealing it on Instagram, especially in the color red, there is just something about it. My very good friend, LV Fash 72 heart, my MJ's, um, and, uh, Lux mommy, they all got the red, uh, Gucci Soho and the leather looks amazing amazing, you know, and it's subtle, but it adds a pop to your outfit. I don't know. There's just something about it. It's definitely growing on me and it's making me do a double take on Gucci, to be honest. Uh, and the Chloe, I do like it. Uh, I'm not too crazy about the opening on it. It just seems like it might lose its shape a little bit. Um, maybe a little bit quicker than the Gucci Soho. Uh, so for me, it would have to be the Gucci Soho, especially in the red there. It, maybe it's not fair because I like red so much and I talk about it so often. So <laughs> maybe I'm not the right person to ask. Uh, but I really do like the Gucci and whether you get it in the red, the black or the beige that they have, or it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal bag. And yeah, so you could tell I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little bit more, uh, partial to the to the Gucci, but I think you should go with whichever one makes your heart sing. Uh, okay. Ansel baby. I recently looked at the Yves Saint Laurent walk in the taupe pebbled leather with silver hardware. Love, love, love that bag. And I loved it. I thought it seemed roomier and has a friendlier price point than the Chanel wallet on chain. What are your thoughts? Uh, okay. So the, um, the Saint Laurent retails for, what did I write? I, I wrote it down. 
I can't even read my own writing. How sad is that? Uh, the wallet on chain obviously retails for $2,100 here in the States, the classic uh, Chanel wallet on chain. <clears throat> And it looks like I wrote $850 for the St. Laurent. Um, okay, so, you know, I love the wallet on chain. You know, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. I talk about them quite often, you know, and um, I think it's a great addition to any collection. The St. Laurent wallet on chain, I have looked at a million times, and I absolutely love it. I do. I love how sturdy the hardware feels. I... I'm obsessed, obsessed to the full extent of the word of the pebbled leather that St. Laurent has, you know, especially because of the little card holder that I have that I've raved about on my channel a million times. Um, and it has that same type of, uh, it has that same type of quality and they're just beautiful. You're right. The price point is insanely better than, uh, than Chanel. Obviously the resale value is going to be a huge factor because, uh, Chanel you know, is a little bit, um, or Chanel is very, very great with resale value. They hold their resale value incredibly well. Uh, St. Laurent doesn't hold on to the resale value as well, but the, the quality of it is amazing. The taupe with the silver hardware is just a beautiful, beautiful combination. And I really like the fact that even though the wallet on chain does have the little credit card slots, you have a total of six. The St. Laurent, I believe has, Oh man, I think I, I think it's 10 or 12 or something like that. You still have to go with something. Uh, you have to go with, you know, um, more narrow items like the, the card holders. Uh, you can't fit too, too bulky of items in there. Uh, but the, the strap length is fantastic. And I have thought a million times over if I should add one to my collection. But, um, I think the reason why I hold back is because I have so many wallet on chains and I just want to, I don't want to have too many small bags. Um, but I think they, I think it's beautiful, especially in the Chevron. It's just gorgeous. So if you want something with better resale value and maybe is a little bit more luxe, uh, I would go for Chanel. But if you want something definitely, uh, with a, with a friendlier price point, as you put it, and with still exceptional quality, the St. Laurent is definitely a great way to go, especially if you carry a lot of, um, credit cards with you and maybe you don't want to use another wallet. You know, if you have, let's say you have 12 credit cards that you absolutely have to carry with you and you don't have enough space on this one and you have to carry a smaller wallet. The other one allows you the option to, to be able to carry all of your credit cards without having to have an extra wallet, if that makes any sense. Uh, but I am, I am obsessed. <laughs> I'm obsessed with that St. Laurent wallet on chain. Gorgeous gorgeous. Uh, okay. Kelly Kulas. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I am butchering your guys' names today. I am so, so sorry. Uh, would you ever do a meet and greet? Uh, I would, I would love to be able to do a meet and greet. Um, I think because I think if I lived in a, you know, in a bigger city, it'd be a lot easier for me to be able to meet up with you guys. Uh, obviously I could always go to uh, San Diego or I can go up to LA. Uh, but I would, I think it would be so much fun to meet any of you guys. And if I ever saw any of you while I was out and about, you know, um, I had someone say that they saw me from a distance and they didn't want to say, they didn't want to say hello, please come say hi. You know, I'm, I promise <laughs> I won't bite. Um, but I would love to be able to go shopping or we can talk about handbags or we could talk about whatever, but, uh, I would love to be able to do a meet and greet. Hopefully in the future, I will be able to have one, uh, you know, where a lot of people can come. Uh, but I know sometimes, uh, especially if you do meet and greets at stores, they don't allow too many people or, um, you know, the other customers, the other customers get kind of uh, leery, I guess. Um, uh, but I was talking to one of my sales associates and she said, um, that maybe they'd be able to host something at the Louis Vuitton, uh, in fashion Valley. So that might be an option, uh, in the near future, who knows, but I think it would be fantastic because I want to meet as many as I can of you guys so I can say hello. <laughs> uh, okay. Lady Susan Jane, I have just purchased a wallet on chain. Congratulations. Uh, the question is to coin or not to coin. If I put my zippy coin purse from Louis Vuitton in the wallet on chain, then I have less room for other things. Do I use a zipped area for my coins? What do you do now? I did, um, 
Uh, I did respond to this question in my July favorites, right? My July favorites. But I thought that I would come on here and also uh, talk about it because maybe if you guys are thinking of the same thing. When it comes to the wallet on chain, as I told you guys earlier, I don't like to have any type of coin in here that's loose especially because of the fabric uh, interior. I feel that this will get very, very dirty. It's very difficult to be able to clean up if you needed to. So when I do use, uh, when I do, um, especially since I don't have another little wallet in here and I just kind of go based solely on the credit card slots, I always use my round coin purse. Now, um, if using my round coin purse means that I can't use another small leather good or I have to minimize on how many lipsticks I will have to carry for that day, I will definitely do it. This is something that I try to carry with me every single time I go out, no matter what type of bag that I'm using, whether it's a smaller clutch, whether it's the wallet on chain or a larger bag like my Neverfull, I always want this with me because of the coin residue. It's just, I guess it's one of my quirks. I don't like the way that it looks on any of my wallets and I especially don't want it on the fabric interior that the wallet on chain has. So it fits in here very, very easily and um, it doesn't take up too much space but you still have enough space here for a clay, your car keys, uh, a lipstick. There's still quite a bit in here, but I don't personally recommend using the, um, the little zipped, uh, compartment here, but, um, that's what I do. I'm just, like I said, I think it's just a, a little quirk that I have this phobia, if you will, of, uh, <laughs> of coin residue, but that's what I always say. So it doesn't take up too much space. And, um, I just feel that it's, quite the lifesaver when it comes to keeping your items looking fresh. <laughs> uh, so hopefully that was able to help. Uh, okay. Amy Keith, I'd love to know your thoughts on, ha on hanging on to handbags for sentimental reasons. I have a Louis Vuitton Odeon GM. That was my first boutique purchase, but I'm honestly over it. I feel like I should have kept it as a reminder of how hard I worked for it. And because it's a discontinued style, I might regret parting with it, but I would love to sell it and get a bag that matches my current taste. Any advice, insight is greatly appreciated. This is a fantastic, fantastic question. Um, you know, when it comes to sentimental, um, you, you, uh, you can't, I don't think sometimes it's hard to be able to put a price. And I, and I say that loosely with a, with something that holds that much, uh, sentimental value to someone, at least myself. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I think that if you're able to put that money towards a bag that you will definitely use, that will definitely be up to, uh, your current taste, then I think that that's worth it, you know, and it's not taking away so much from how hard you worked for it or how much it means to you because yes, you did use it and you loved it when you had it. It meant so much to you, but you still have a little bit, you still have a part of that special bag in another bag that you'll be using. Uh, you know, and, um, there is one bag that I have held on to, um, in my entire collection. It is a coach bag that my dad bought me. It is a Demi pouch. It's hot pink. No surprise there. Uh, but there's no way I would ever part with that because it's so special to me. And, uh, you know, even though I know I'd get pennies for it if I was to resell it, the re the the sentimental value that it has is so much more that um, even if I got twenty five dollars, it's twenty five dollars I wouldn't want to put towards a new bag if that makes any sense. So when it comes to other bags, you know, uh, especially discontinued ones, sometimes they don't tend to hold their resale value as well. Uh, always the popular bags are, you know, are always the best bet when it comes to resale, but it's all a matter of how you feel. And if you think that you will get seller's regret from selling something, uh, or from parting with something, then I don't recommend it because even though I've never had seller's regret personally, um, I can definitely understand where, where people come from because, you know, if it has a sentimental value for, uh, towards it, if it has a special meaning because of this, that, or the other, whatever it is, if if you have, um, if there's a slight chance that you think that you might regret it, I would definitely hold on to it a little bit longer and maybe, you know, in six months time or three months time, then maybe that's when you'll say, okay, this bag it needs to be out of my collection or you'll have the type of revelation where you're just like, okay, this is a bag that's going to stay in my collection forever, no matter what. And you just kind of sign off on it, if that makes any sense. Um, you know, but it's, it's, it's really difficult, but I'm the type of person that 
I think that as long as I can hold on to those memories, not necessarily the item, then I'm okay with that because I remember where I went, where I traveled, where, you know, how I got it, the, um, the experience from when I received it and things like that. I think as long as I can remember that and as long as I can hold on to that, then I don't really necessarily need to hold on to the item itself. Uh, but it's a matter of figuring out if that's something that you want to do. And that way, if you do sell that item, you still have a little bit of that special bag in another bag that you will carry often. I wish you the best of luck and I hope I was able to help. Um, okay, Sandra Boyle, what do you think of the Chanel reissue classic flat bag? Would you add it to your collection? Uh, okay, so when it comes to the Chanel uh, reissue, I really do like it. Uh, sometimes I'm not too crazy about how the leather looks, but I love the fact that it's an original uh, design. I love the chain because it's just a nice sturdy chain. But I have realized that if I was to spend money on the Chanel reissue, I know that I wouldn't get anywhere near what I paid for it if I was to resell it. And that's kind of funny. I wonder why that is. It's an original, it's an original design. And whenever you look on pre-sell or on uh, pre-owned websites, you see that they're half of whatever that person ended up purchasing it for initially. So I wonder why that is. Maybe it's because of the I don't know the features. I think it's a beautiful bag, but I think that's why I hold off on it because if I'm going to spend that amount of money on a Chanel bag, I'd like to know that I'd be able to get more than half, uh, more than half of what I paid for or not more than half. Uh, yeah, more than half of what I paid for it. Uh, you know, so if you spent $5,000 or $4,000, I'd like to be able to get more than, than, uh, than 2000 or 1500 for it. Uh, but it's, it's, they are beautiful, but I don't think I, I, I really want to know why. I really want to know why it is that they don't have the best resale value. I think that's what boggles my mind the most. <laughs> but would I add one to my collection? I would, but I would purchase it pre-loved. Definitely, hands down. And that way, if I ever sold it, I wouldn't be too worried about the, you know, the resale value for it because I'm enjoying the bag and I got it at a great price. Okay, next question from Nanu Girl. I'm going to France next week to the Louis Vuitton boutique in Lyon, and I want to get a small wallet that will fit in my smaller bags or my pochette accessoire. The Siri Use Compact in Empreinte Black or the Zippy Compact in Damier Ben. I have a Neverfull in Damier Ben and a Speedy 30 in Mono. I love the Empreinte leather, but I love the comfort of the zip around closure. Uh, this is a great question. I think both are fantastic for different reasons. Obviously, if you want a little bit more security, then the uh, Zippy wallet would be a better option to go for. If you want to add a little bit of a variety to your, obviously this is the clay. I don't have a uh, full size uh, or a compact or full size wallet in Empreinte leather. Uh, but if you want a little bit of a variety to your collection, then I think that the Empreinte uh, compact wallet would be another great way to go. Uh, especially because I love the way that the Empreinte wears. Obviously over time, the embossing won't be as deep. It'll tend to maybe not I guess the word should be flatten out um, over time, but I still really love the way that it looks. It's very, very carefree. And even though this does have varnish, I feel that you don't have to worry as much as far as, you know, canvas cracking or anything like that. So again, if you want to add variety, go for the Empreinte. If you want something with, um, with uh, security and, uh, you know, you still have quite a bit of credit card slots and I would go for the Zippy Compact and Dami event. Either one I think would be a fantastic way to go. Uh, okay, next question from Rocio Castillo. I was able to start my Louis Vuitton collection with a Neverfull GM. I'm a mommy of a two-year-old, so it's my diaper bag too. The six key holder, the Josephine and Rose Ballerine, and the round coin purse. I'm super happy with all. I'm saving for the twice in Emprunt Noir. Do you think it will still be a part of the Louis Vuitton family for much longer? I saw they no longer offer it in the canvas monogram print. Worried they may discontinue it before I can save enough to uh, to purchase it. Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't read what I was trying to say. Uh, okay. For those of you wondering the twice in Emprunt Noir retails for $1,440 here in the States. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, I did ask my sales associate about it and if she had any news on it. And she, um, she said that usually whenever they have a bag that's offered in different prints or different leathers, once they start taking away from, um, from how many different options you can get it in, then that might be a reasoning that they might end up getting rid of it you know, in the future, she doesn't know with certainty. So I wouldn't be able to, to tell you for sure. Uh, but 
what I would recommend is I would call your sales associate and let them know that you're very, very interested in the bag. And that way, if they get any news, any email on whether or not they are going to be discontinuing it, or if they're going to be adding more colors to that specific style, that's another great, uh, that's another great way to know that they're going to be, uh, still producing that handbag. So that way, if they get any news on it whatsoever, it'll be able, uh, you'll be able to figure out if it's something that you should jump on now, or if you should wait a little bit longer, uh, until you save up for it, like you said. Uh, and, uh, the twice I think is a really great, great bag. Again, it retails for 1440 here in the States. I'm pretty sure. Uh, and you know, if you like crossbody bags, if you like on prompt bags and you want something a little bit more care carefree, it's a great, great option. It still has quite a bit of space. And I just really like the simplicity of it. So, um, again, I would just ask your sales associate to keep you in the loop that way. If anything goes down, if they're going to get rid of it, if they're going to add more then you know, uh, up front and that way you can make your decision. So hopefully that was able to help. Uh, okay. And the last question from in Sue and Sue, I have a question about the Louis Vuitton mini pochette. You have too many pochettes. As far as I remember, did you ever realize a difference between two of them, two of them from the chain quality? I find out the older models until the year 2014 has a much better quality chain. The color is more yellow, yellow, gold, thicker and heavier and feels richer. Then the new ones, the canvas is getting worse and worse year by year, as everybody knows. And we do end up paying a lot of money for a small piece of leather where it's written made in France. And now the quality of the chain is, is like, sorry to say, but worse than the cheapest made in China extension chains sold on eBay. I'm so disappointed and sad. What do you think? Uh, okay. So really it's between, uh, the older mini pochettes and the newer ones. If I have noticed uh, a difference. So I actually brought both of mine out so we can take a look at them. Obviously my Damien band is a lot older than the newest one that my hubby purchased for me, which was the, uh, mini pochette. And, um, let me just look at them side by side. I can tell you that the older one, I'm trying to do this so you guys can see it as well. Okay. The newer one has, this is the, this is the monogram and this is the Damia Ben. As you can see, the monogram is a lot more yellow. It has a lot more yellow to it. This looks more like a, uh, like a light gold, if you will, on the Damia Ben. And if I have to compare them, I feel that the newer ones are actually a lot thicker than the older one. The older one seems very, it does seem a little bit flimsier to be honest. Um, so I have actually noticed the, the opposite of what it is, um, that you have noticed. Uh, but check this out. I feel like this is a lot thicker, definitely a lot thicker. I'm going to try to bring them up as close as I can. Okay. So now I have the monogram on top. And I have the Demi Ben down below. So you can even see it there. Uh, this is a lot thicker. This is a lot more yellow. And I honestly feel that the monogram one feels a lot better than the Demi Ben. So check that out. Do you guys see that? Even from far away, you can see the difference. Light yellow versus the darker yellow. And um, I even brought out my, my show and tell. <laughs> I brought out the K-Craft... Um, chains that I got on eBay ages ago. Here they are. I don't remember the style numbers. So my apologies, otherwise I'd be able to, to share it with you guys, but there is a seller on eBay. Um, their name is K craft, I believe. And I got these two chains for my push accessoires when I did have them. And I thought that maybe I'd be able to use them and whatnot. Um, they haven't, I think I used them once or twice. I didn't use them too often because I was, I was, to be honest, I was super worried that something would happen that they would end up snapping off and I would end up losing my push accessoire and I'd just be stuck with the chain, you know, on my shoulder. Um, but here they are and let me put them side by side so you guys can see them. This is a lot more difficult <laughs> than I thought. Here we go. All right. So let's take this one out cause it doesn't look like it. Oh my goodness. Many, you are having issues. Okay. <laughs> I really should, I should edit this part out, but Hey, I make mistakes. <laughs> uh, okay. So on the very top, we have the Demi Ben, uh, in the middle, you see the monogram, many push it. And on the bottom, you see the K craft chains. 
This chain does feel heavy. It still feels flimsy. Uh, and I'd have to say that the monogram is definitely 100% sturdier than this chain. And I've never really noticed it too, too much. That's crazy. So uh, there you can see uh, the side-by-side -side comparison between an older piece and a newer piece. And um, as I told you guys earlier, I feel that it's actually the opposite of what uh, what you experienced. Um, but I, you know, I still think that the mini pochette is great, especially because you don't have to worry too much about it. Yes, it does have that little piece of leather, but I just think this is a phenomenal, phenomenal piece. And I haven't heard of too many people having issues with it. Like I told you guys in my July favorites, this thing is ready to go to Louis Vuitton because check out the wear that I have on the zipper there. It's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> If I do say so myself, you know, but I just really like this item. I don't think about it. Throw it in my purse. It's just one of those types. Uh, all right. So hopefully uh, that comparison was able to help you guys out. So that does it for MMQA this week. I know it might be a little bit short, uh, but I'm kind of running around. Uh, I have some errands that I have to go do, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I also want to let you guys know that for my 100th, um, Minx Monday q and I appreciate all of your guys' feedback. My goodness, you guys are amazing. And uh, I am trying my hardest to be able to do it live. I'm going to see if it's something that I can do. Obviously, I have to have a good webcam that is a I mean, pretty, that way you guys, it's, it's a little bit more clear because otherwise it'll be really, really grainy and it'll look horrible. So I'm going to try my hardest to make it live because I think it would be awesome to be able to interact with you guys right then and there. Um, I can't guarantee anything, but I still want to do something special for it. I love the fact that you guys are like, some of you are like, you don't have to do anything, you know, uh, just have Edward and Edward is actually hanging out with me, but He's mad at me right now, so, because <laughs> I'm filming. Um, but I really do appreciate all the love and all the support that you guys have given me and all the wonderful feedback. And hopefully I'm able to make um, our 100th uh, Mixed Meta Q&A special. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you tomorrow. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.